Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. I, uh, it's special for me to celebrate this Christmas because like Rick said, our family is growing. But maybe you're here today. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I wanna let you know, it's not just the family of birth that is growing. God is building this family right here in Miami. And I don't know what your story is. I don't know what you walked in here carrying, but I want you to know there's a family for you to be a part of. I just wanna cut to the chase. You don't have to go through life alone. You can walk this journey, the highs and lows, knowing that there are people around you and a God that loves you. Come on, if that's the story of your life, can we just put our hands together? That's the story of Christmas, right? I love this story that we read in the Gospels of Jesus born in a manger, and it, it's a messy story. It's a story that's full of, full of twists and turns, and I think it's beautiful that, that Jesus came to this earth 2,000 years ago, not just to give us eternal salvation, but to give us peace for today. And He not only gives us peace for today, but He gives us a family to belong to. See, the local church is His invention. It's His heart. He loves it. We didn't just make it up. He instituted it, and He's still building it. And He wants you to walk through life knowing that you'll never walk alone. And for me, you know, as we've, as we've gotten ready for Christmas this year, it's been insanity for me because I'm still trying to figure out how to live and operate with two kids under two. Can I get an amen from all the parents? It's insane. And one of the things that I've been thinking about a lot is just traditions. How many of you know that traditions hold power? Traditions are the way that we give shape to time. In every culture, in every language, there are traditions that are upheld and carried throughout generation to generation. And you know, you're kind of sitting in one right now. This is a tradition. Together, together as the local church all around the globe on Christmas Eve and to recognize that because of the birth of Jesus, our lives, our marriages, our jobs, our thought life, our purpose will never be the same again. Aren't you thankful for the opportunity to celebrate the birth of Jesus that changes everything? But I've been trying to figure out traditions for my house because I want Christmas to be a special time in our home. So I threw it out there on IG this week. I said, guys, I need help. I'm creating traditions for my home and I need ideas. And you guys gave me the best ideas in the world. I mean, people wrote in, I, somebody wrote they did a roller disco this past Sunday after church and they're gonna do it every Christmas from now on. Somebody else wrote cinnamon rolls. In fact, if cinnamon rolls are a part of your family tradition, give me a wave because I got so many cinnamon roll responses. <laughs> I gotta do that one. Somebody else wrote that they have churros and hot chocolate. Somebody else wrote me that they have their traditional roasted pork that their family creates every single Christmas. And the traditions just rolled in one after another after the other. And there's one tradition in our house that we've done since I was born and that's a family photo. Every Christmas we take a family pic. Anybody with me tonight? You gotta get your family Christmas pic. And it was a mission this year. It was not easy. I had a 13 year old, a 13 day, that would have been hard too, 13 year old. But I had a 13 day old and a year and a half old. And we finally, we took hundreds of pictures pulled it together, got a handful that worked. And I'll show you the one that we got. Here it is. That's my family. That's Wyatt, Wyatt, Rich. But here's the funny thing that you'd never know, that in the midst of this picture that looks great as you're looking at it right now, actually, Wyatt had a black eye. And I want you to see it right now. This kid had a bruiser that you had to see. Like there was no way to hide it. And so what we had to do is we had to Photoshop every single one of the pictures because that thing was just shining and it didn't look very good. Somebody was gonna show up on my doorstep the next day 
checking to make sure I'm treating my kids right (laughs) if I would have sent that picture out. But I think that when it comes to our lives, a lot of times we try to Photoshop the bruises of our life away. We try to walk through the doors in our nice clothes with a smile on our face. Meanwhile, our heart is broken. Our life may feel like it's in a complete chaos. We may feel completely isolated and alone, but we cover up the bruises and we try to Photoshop it and we try to show that everything is okay on the outside. I don't know what kind of church you grew up in or what the message of the gospel that has been presented to you in the past, but I wanna tell you right now that that is not the message of the gospel. The message of the gospel is, is that we serve a God that wants you to bring your mess to his miracle working hands because he said in Isaiah, a bruised reed, he will not break. His faithfulness is shown in his justice. He is able to touch the most broken parts of your life. But will you be honest today? Will you be honest about the bruises in your life, the broken pieces of your life? I'm thankful that when we look to the Christmas story, that we serve a God that didn't Photoshop the Christmas story, so we thought it was perfect. But he showed us all the brokenness. He showed us the chaos of a teenage mom who is soon to be wed to a man who suddenly gets the news that his wife is pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a crazy story that this this child who is the king, that he is born in a manger, in in a trough where animals feed, that that's where he lays. I'm so thankful that God decided to show us the mess so that we could understand that he is able to take our mess and he's able to turn it into a miracle, Amen? amen? But it's not just the pictures and the cinnamon rolls and the hot chocolate that I love about the traditions of Christmas and gathering around celebrating Jesus' birth. Another tradition that I absolutely love, I love the art of giving gifts. Does anybody just love trying to figure out the perfect gift for the people that you love? I think that when we approach it from a place of love and honor, that gifts can mean something, that, that gifts can be carried, whether the material thing stays or leaves, that the memory of it we can hold in our hearts for the rest of our lives. And the definition of a gift is a thing willingly given without payment. It is a present. You know, gifts are a surprise. There's this thrill of expectation. What am I going to get? What is it going to be? One one person wrote into me on IG that her favorite tradition was her aunt wraps all their gifts in saran wrap, and it takes forever for them to open them. (laughs) And I imagine that when you look through history, that it seemed like it took forever for the Messiah to appear in history. They were waiting, broken humanity, waiting and longing for the Savior to appear, going, God, when is this gift gonna arrive? It seems like generation after generation, we're waiting for the layers to unpeel, oh God. We need our broken hearts to be renewed. We need the Messiah, and then the Messiah appears. And really this tradition of giving gifts comes from the Magi. These wise men, these wise men who showed up on the scene when Jesus was a young boy. He wasn't in the manger when they showed up. Theologians say it could have taken all the way up to two years for them to make their journey to to Jesus. But when they show up, they bring gifts. And this is what the Word of God says in Matthew chapter 2, verse 10. It says, When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You see, the very heart of the gospel is shown in the specific gifts that they brought to Jesus. These gifts, they hold value and they hold a message to you and I tonight. 
as we celebrate Jesus. They gave gold. So what did gold symbolize? Well, gold symbolized that Jesus was king. Gold symbolized that he was royalty. They gave frankincense. Frankincense symbolized that he wasn't just a king, but he was deity. That he was God himself. Frankincense symbolized that they believed that he was king and he was Lord of lords. But they also brought myrrh before him. And myrrh was used in that day and age to embalm bodies of the dead. A prophetic gesture of the reason Jesus was born 2,000 years ago. That this babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. From the moment he took his first breath, he was destined to die. For all the sins of humanity, that the beauty of life and the miracle of his birth was ultimately created so that he could sacrifice it all upon the cross and then be resurrected three days later. This is the message. This is why we celebrate, you know? When we look to the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, you and I get to bring the same gifts in our hearts today and every day while following Jesus. You see, as we choose to be Christ followers, as we choose to put our faith and trust in Him, in our marriage and in our homes and in our job and in our purpose, we choose to bring the gold of saying, God, you are King of kings in my life. There's nobody else on the throne of my life. My job doesn't hold no weight. Nothing else matters but you, Lord, you are the King. As we come to God with the gifts of thanksgiving, we say, Lord, not only are you the king of my life, but you are God of all. You created the world. You created the universe. You created my mind. You created the dreams that you placed within me. You created my purpose. You have future generations even now in your mind. You put me in history for such a time as this. When you awaken to the God that you serve, you'll awaken to the purpose that he's placed within you. But then also... When we bring the gift, we bring the same gift that they gave. Myrrh, when we choose to say, God, just as you laid down your life for me, I will lay down my life. See, the message of Christmas isn't just that we do some some nice gift exchanges and get some 75% off sales and start the year feeling good about life. The message of the gospel and the message of the manger is that of sacrifice complete and total sacrifice. And as followers of Jesus, that's what we are called to do, to lay down our lives daily for the cause of Christ, to give, to surrender. Come on, if you believe it today, let's put our hands together for the opportunity to live for something that is so much greater than ourselves. A king, deity, born in a manger, destined to die. You know, it's interesting because Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And Bethlehem was where the lambs who were used for sacrifice in the temple were raised and groomed to be killed. They were raised there. The first male lamb that was born was set aside for the temple and for the priests. And here Jesus, born in the same city, prophesied to be a lamb that was led to the slaughter so that you and I, we don't have to walk around hiding our bruises any longer. But we can know that we serve a healer. We serve a God who is willing and able to touch the broken areas of our life, to pick us up in our isolation, feeling abandoned and left alone. And he places us within a family. Why? Because he chose to sacrifice it all. This is what we celebrate today. Jesus called the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. See, John 1.14 says, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And Isaiah prophesied, though your sins are scarlet, they will be as white 
as snow. What a gift. What a thrill. Something to wake up every day with expectation in our hearts that there is another layer to open. More of his mercies. More of his joy. It awaits you even now if you choose to surrender. The author of O Holy Night penned the words, the thrill of hope, a weary world rejoicing. Are you weary today? Are you tired? Are you burdened? Because the message of the babe is the message of a weary world suddenly able to rejoice because they have the thrill of a gift, a thrill of hope, not for your neighbor, but for your heart. Not for just your pastor or your leader or your parents, but for your soul. That's why he came for you. He loves you. He died for you. He gave everything that he had, everything for you. I love what St. Augustine says. He says, rejoice you just. It is the birthday of the justifier. Rejoice you who are weak and sick. It is the birthday of the savior, the healer. Rejoice captives. It is the birthday of the Redeemer. Rejoice, slaves. It is the birthday of the one who makes you lords. Rejoice, free people. It is the birthday of the one who makes you free. Rejoice, all Christians. It is the birthday of Christ. Come on. Is anybody ready to celebrate and rejoice that we know the one who is able to do that which we cannot but maybe today you can't rejoice. Maybe today you're bruised and you're broken. Well, my words won't bring healing, but the words and the love of Jesus will. And this is what Jesus said to his disciples in Luke chapter six, verse 20. Looking at his disciples, he said, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. And then he says that word we're talking about. He says, rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. The message of the gospel is if you're broken, good news. Because if you're broken, you're blessed. You are blessed beyond measure. You are covered. You are protected. You are bought with the price. You are loved. And your brokenness, it will not last because the healer is here. He has come for you. And his healing power is enough for your bruises. You don't have to hide them any longer. You know, for 35 years, I've done this tradition. I've done the tradition of the gifts. I've done the tradition of the, the pictures, but I've done this tradition of lighting a candle every Christmas Eve. And yeah, it's, it's a beautiful moment, but please don't, don't diminish it to simply a, a picture-worthy moment. Please don't diminish it to just a moment when you get goosebumps because we're all standing and we all have a candle in our hands. Because as we hold this candle, see this flame, it represents the power of the Holy Spirit that as we surrender our lives to Jesus, He doesn't just lead us into purpose, He fills us with purpose. That everywhere we go, His presence is with us. 
And this flame, it represents the fact that, yeah, the gifts are nice underneath the tree, but man, I sure hope that we're giving the gift and the totality of our love day to day because there's gonna come a day where we stand before God and the flame will burn away everything that didn't matter. And the only thing that will remain are the things that we did out of a heart of love. And you see this fire, as it burns, it represents the power of the light of Jesus Christ that 2000 years ago illuminated a dark and broken, helpless world. And tonight, if your heart is dark and broken and helpless, the light of Jesus Christ will illuminate your heart and He will never leave you and you will never walk in darkness ever again. This is why we hold the candle. Because 1 John 4, 9 says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. The prophet Isaiah said, arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord shines over you. Tonight, if you've never surrendered your life to Jesus, this is your opportunity. You can spend your whole life searching or you can choose to surrender tonight and let his light shine upon you, fill you with everything that you've been longing for. No, you don't have to fix your bruises before you come to him. You don't have to hide them. He's waiting to heal your brokenness and he wants to use your brokenness to shine his light to the world around you.